hello you guys welcome to a new weekly vlog so i am halfway through the hundred thousand kingdoms by nk jemison spectacular revolutionary never been done before i love this so much and i really want to finish it tonight but i know that's probably not gonna happen because it's like 200 pages and this one does take me a bit longer to read not because of the writing but more because the chapters are so long and i have a short attention span but this mm, perfection i love it so much i definitely need to read more of kings of the wild i have not picked this up since i gave a last update in my last vlog so definitely need to get on this and then there was one other update that i wanted to give you quickly because i forgot to tell you guys in my last vlog but i decided to dnf scavenge the stars i dnf this 90 pages in the writing was just really meh very generic the dialogue was very cliche and this is a count of monte cristo retelling and if you aren't familiar with a count of monte cristo you start off the book seeing the betrayal happen that happens between our main character and their best friend and you you see the initial betrayal happen and then he goes to prison and then you see that and you see him train and ground up this revenge plot in his mind and then after he gets out of prison after he gets his money he then becomes the count and carries out his revenge plot this book starts when we're in prison so you don't see the motivation for the character and the stakes for the character to carry out their revenge is it really a spoiler if it happens in the 90 page mark i'm gonna tell you anyway the captain of the merchant ship that our main character is has been on to repay debts ends up being the one who is responsible for the murder of her mother and she doesn't learn that her mother is dead until her debt is repaid and she is going to go home and then the captain tells her i just could tell that this was going to be a two or three star read i just knew in my gut that that's what was going to happen i'm just not going to waste my time with books that i know i'm going to rate three stars or two stars it's just there are too many books that i want to read so we're not going to give that content unless i know it's going to be like a rare review and it's going to be real juicy content but this one i knew it was just going to be like eh. also i realized that this shirt is just really wrinkly right now whatever this is my pajama shirt who the hell cares i really want to finish hundred thousand kingdoms because how are they gonna be a five star i'm not gonna lie it was quite a high four star pretty consistently throughout this but now that i've hit the halfway point it has increased immensely in my enjoyment level and the mythology with the gods is so I love own world mythology. It's juicy and I love it. Hello. So I have been reading Hundred Thousand Kingdoms and there's this there's one part that I kind of wish not necessarily was explained more, but analyzed more or discussed more. I don't know exactly. But so there's three gods. There's the big three that I mentioned in my previous vlog. There is the god of night, the god of the sun, and the goddess of everything in between it's kind of like a chaos order balance kind of scenario the sun god i mean light spoilers but it's not gonna deter you at all to read this but the sun god ends up killing the the goddess for reasons that you learn she's called like the betrayer and all of this stuff i can't imagine well one i can't imagine killing my sister at all obviously because i have sanity and morals but imagine being the only three beings in the entire universe and just spending eons before time even existed with somebody and then killing that person that just seems crazy to me especially even in god standards it seems incomprehensible to be capable of doing that and not only be capable of doing it choosing to do something that permanent especially because we learn that the sun god is very much against change and so for that 
just that period because of how he just is as a person and like his whole morality or whatever the fact that you're order and you kill balance that just seems like it would have so many repercussions which we obviously see like the repercussions of it it just i kind of wish that was explained more and maybe it will be when we meet the sun god because we haven't actually seen him we've met the night god many of times many a times as i said he's very he's a very nice character but maybe once we meet the sun god which i assume we will eventually then we kind of get his side on why he did it but I do want to know. Like, I want to know that because that seems just seems crazy to me to be able to do that and to go through with doing that. Reading this because I'm not going to read anything else until I finish this because it's so fucking good. There's this part where our main character is talking about how it's said that the Night Lord, aka the Night God, doesn't cry. And that is the one thing that the almighty powers didn't give him. <sighs> and then there's a quote where I assume it's like kind of like a flashback or we're seeing in his head or whatever, something's going on. And it says, when I lift my head to scream out my fury, a million stars turn black and die. No one can see them, but they are my tears. Who writes like this? I, this book is so good. Do you like the taste? <laughs> if I were to give one negative thing about this book is I do not care about Yena's politics with her home country because now that she has this power and her home country is very poor and so she of course now that she has this position of power and this position of wealth she wants to increase the living conditions and etc etc of her home country which i get but i just i don't care and that part kind of takes me out of the story a little bit because there are that there is that subplot of her trying to maneuver political machinations in order to benefit her home country and it takes me out of the grand scheme about with the gods and the airship and the all of these things so that is one negative aspect and i don't care for those scenes but I mean, they're still interesting because it's still political intrigue and that's interesting, but one negative aspect. Y'all, there is full on smut in here and I am living my best life. I genuinely can't believe that this man's dick was so good that this bitch traveled through the damn cosmos. We have never stand a book harder. Hello, you guys. So, I have finished The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms. Five motherfucking stars. Oh my god, this book took me on a journey. It took me on an experience. It just rocked my world in all of the best ways it just i truly cannot process how incredibly unique abstract magical masterful this book is there are so many plot twists in here there's so many revelations that happened the romance in this book oh my god the literally the night god uh, Nahadoth? Nahadoth? I think that's maybe how you pronounce it. Him and Yena. The most beautiful, hateful, lustful relationship. And there's just this underlining 
like sexual tension throughout the entire relationship development and there's also a sprinkle of the reincarnation trope which is a trope that i feel like we don't get enough this couple has ruined me for all other couples across genres across literature they are written so beautifully in their emotional development and intellectual development and their sexual development this was so steamy i was not expecting it to go there and it went everywhere <laughs> again literally bless nk jemison i will worship this woman for the rest of my life because of what she did in this singular book and i haven't even finished the rest of the trilogy yet five stars absolutely brilliant just brilliant i feel like that's the overall number one adjective i can give this book the flavor the intellect unmatched i don't know what to read now i know i should read kings of the wild i probably will do that I'm just looking over there at my shelves because I have so many books and so many library books too. Did you play something to me? Like this Hello, we are gonna go to the library and pick up some books and drop some books off. That I totally read all of them because she, I was there, I can be her witness, she read all of them. That's my car telling me to put my seatbelt on because safety first. Okay, let's go. So I got two books. So I got The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter, which I was hearing nothing but good things until I saw Jocelyn from Yogi with a Books review and she gave it like two or one star. But previous to her review, I heard nothing but glorious reviews from Daniel Green and Murphy Napier, which are one of my two favorite booktubers. So I'm going to give it a shot myself. I know that it is a military fantasy, which I don't entirely know how I feel about that because usually war and stuff is the most uninteresting thing about history for me. But like I said, I'm going to give it a shot. We'll see how it goes. And then I picked up the Sleeper and the Spindle by Neil Gaiman. This is a fairy tale retelling. I assume it's a Sleeping Beauty retelling from the title. And I've heard it's just really beautiful because it's like illustrated and things like that. So I saw it and I picked it up and I'll probably get the audiobook for it because I hear that the audiobook is good, but it's good to have the book physically too so you can see the illustrations and all that. But and then I unbeknowingly got similar color schemes. So we love the aesthetics. So yeah, that's what I got. Um, do you want to go thrifting? Yes.
she is a mess hello i haven't updated in a while because i haven't been reading or at least i haven't been reading things that i can talk to you guys about but i did just finish the sleeper and the spindle which as you would have seen i checked this out from my library because i heard that it had an amazing audiobook and i can safely say that the audiobook for this book is the best audiobook i have ever listened to it is a full cast and it is so cinematic they have like sound effects where you can hear the footsteps and you can hear the people talking in the background and you can hear the wind and the leaves it was so good i highly recommend getting the audiobook as well as the physical copy and listening and reading at the same time because oh my god the illustrations in here absolutely just beautiful i love the pictures and the subtle touches of gold in here like look at that so beautiful so this one i'm just going to say that it is a snow white and sleeping beauty retelling that's all i really want to say about it i don't think you should go into it knowing anything else because it's very very short it is only 70 pages so definitely definitely recommend this was a five star for me and usually with like picture books and like shorter books like this i am more inclined to give five stars because i think of these as more artistic and i take a lot of the art into account into my rating and this was so beautiful the audiobook my favorite audiobook of all time it has surpassed heartless for me which is my favorite novel actual novel audiobook of all time but this was so amazing i kind of had the lights dimmed a little bit and i had a candle going and it was low-key kind of creepy at times which is so neil gaiman it is so perfectly him i neil gaiman he is such a delight isn't he i really need to read more of his books i have the graveyard book on my shelves and i hear that that audiobook is really good as well i hear that i think it's a full cast too so i i really need to get to that one this was such a treat i will definitely be putting this on my wish list if you want to get it for me link down below it was magnificent so beautiful i want to like hang this art on my walls so pretty and look at matches i could so do it other than that i have been listening to renegades by marissa meyer but i have not been paying attention while i was listening so i need to re listen but i was facetiming with carly tonight because we watched uh island barbie and the island princess together and we were talking a little bit beforehand and i guessed the plot twist that happens at the very end of the third book <laughs> immediately so like we were kind of freaking out about that because she was like how did you guess that that was like the biggest plot twist of the whole series and i was like because it's obvious but that's pretty much the only thoughts i have i don't think i'm going to like it to be honest the only reason that i picked it up i wasn't even going to read this book but then i saw a tweet villains or hero and villains who don't know that they are enemies but and they're friends but like when they're in the mask then they're enemies i think it was something like that and people said it was literally renegade so i was like i mean that sounds that's all kind of cool i kind of want with that so i got the audiobook and it's waiting for me at the library so i'm gonna do the whole listen and reading that i've been doing for all of the books now and just see if i end up liking it and if i dnf it then i dnf it but i just want to give it a shot okay so i just got back from the library and i picked up some stuff so the first thing i got was get a life chloe brown by talia hibbert i have been on hold for this book for so damn long and i don't even know if i'm in the mood to read romance at the moment but i really really loved the christmas novella that i read by talia hibbert during the 
Christmas season, and I'm very excited. And then I picked up on a whim The Dead Queens Club by Hannah Chapin. Chapin? I know that this is, isn't this the author of Foul is Fair that just released? like two days ago? I think it is. So that's cool. Um, I don't know anything about this, but it looks like a Henry VIII wives kind of thing. It says, when Henry's king being queen can be killer. I'm sure it's just going to be like a really cheesy high school drama kind of moment, which could be cute, but also could be too ridiculous for my taste so I'm gonna just I'm gonna find out and then finally as I said I had Renegades waiting for me which I am listening to the audiobook for and I have no opinions on it yet but here we go let's see it says at University of California on the nomination of the faculty of the School of Social Sciences Humanities and Arts have conferred upon Heather Marie Autry the degree of Bachelor of Arts with a major in history with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining given at Merced this 20th day of December in the year 2019. Wow. Oh, graduation honors. Mm. Hello. So, as you would have seen from the last clip, my bachelor's diploma came in the mail today, which was very, very exciting. It's just kind of surreal that I have a college degree. Kind of wild. Other than that, I have been doing a ton of reading. I have been listening to quite a bit of Renegades by Marissa Meyer. I am almost 200 pages into it. I'm not necessarily enjoying this, but I'm enjoying it enough to not DNF it quite yet. This is about our main character Nova and when she was younger, I think she was like 10 or 6 or something, her entire family was killed by this villainous group and for some reason because the heroes didn't save her from this gang, she has dedicated her life to being the anarchists which are like the villains and the renegades are like the heroes. It's like a superhero kind of world. Partly also because her uncle was like the leader of the anarchists so she kind of just went into that field. We'll, we'll put a pin in that. And then when she is older after a failed assassination plot on the leader of the renegades, she decides to infiltrate the renegades through this competition and becomes a spy for the anarchists. And then there's a second perspective and he's the son of the leaders of the renegades and he kind of has a secret identity going on where he is trying to be this vigilante but nobody knows it's him and he has kind of this really cool power where if he tattoos something on his body he gets that certain power which is really really cool and i love that idea but anyways first of all this is super cheesy very cheesy I can't really describe it, but like the dialogue is just really campy comic lines that really just doesn't translate well in this kind of setting, in this tone. It it just doesn't really work and it's quite jarring when I started to listen to it. I almost completely DNF'd it, like listening to it for 10 minutes because it's just a little strange. Nova is also a very typical broody, tragic past, snarky main character and listen, I love a snarky female character. I do. But every single YA female protagonist is this girl who just thinks she is so witty and so badass and I just don't believe them. Maybe that's some internalized misogyny popping out but I just, it's very obnoxious. I don't know what's happening with this because I don't necessarily want to DNF it yet because 
one, I don't really have another audiobook to listen to, so I might as well. And two, I think I should at least wait to get to the point why I read this series in the first place and to get like the friendship between, I think his name is Adrian and Nova. And so I get the, the dynamic that I wanted to read this book for anyways. So I'm going to wait until I get to that point. And if I really just not vibing with it, I'll DNF it. I don't understand Nova's logic to becoming a villain. And like the whole point of this story is to show that there are bad guys in the good guy side and good guys in the bad guy side. And it's not black and white. That's the analogy I was looking for. But I don't understand why Nova was like, oh, these heroes didn't save me at this random point when there are hundreds of other families out there that probably are in my exact position, they're in trouble and are in a bad place. But because they didn't save my family, they're trash. It really doesn't make sense to me. And it's probably just because I haven't gotten that far into it, but I don't really sympathize with the anarchists at all there are we've gotten some asshole renegades but that's always going to be the case but i'm sure the renegades are going to do something shitty and i'm going to be like oh i get it but for the most part they're at least creating some order in the setting and the whole argument is that everybody would just be better off if there were no superheroes getting involved in their lives and granted that it's probably correct, but this is just the world that they live in now, so I don't sympathize with the anarchists. There is one good thing I can say about this. Marissa Meyer writes really great action scenes, and I think the writing in this is very good in the aspect of setting and pacing, and I think she shows the action-packedness of a superhero setting, superhero movie, and I think it translates really well to a novel that I feel like would be very difficult to do, and I think she does a great job with that. That is a positive, but do I still like the execution in general? with the characters and the dialogue. No, but setting and writing wise, it's pretty good. Hello, you guys. I have not read too much more of Renegades. I'm only on chapter 17, which is only like 30 pages from what I last updated you. So I really don't have a whole lot more to say. We are now with Nova in the Institute, or I'm reading the Shadowhunter Chronicles right now. So those words are just influencing my brain, but the headquarters of the Renegades. And she she is just walking around and learning all the things and doing what spies do best. I still can't tell you why I'm reading slash listening to this because I'm not necessarily enjoying it but I guess I'm just doing it to just do it. I don't I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here with this but she's here and she has been read so will I finish it? Will I DNF it? Tune in next week to find out. Speaking of, I am going to close off this vlog. So this week I finished two books. The first book being 100,000 Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin. If you have not seen my review for this book, it is up on my channel. Go link up in the cards. You will see it. Go watch it. I really enjoyed talking about this book and analyzing it and reviewing it for you guys. So I would appreciate the watch. And then I finished the sleep Sleeper and the Spindle by Neil Gaiman, which I also gave five stars. So I just had a really, really great reading week. I had a really great week in general, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching. And if you didn't, there's always next week. Goodbye.